welcome to the show. This is Mark Davis at Backstage. I'm here with SB Made Me. What's up, SB? What's good, man? How you doing? Not bad, not bad. So tell me about yourself. What you been doing? Well, let's just start off with what's been going on with you. I see you just released a, a new video. Yes, sir. That's, yes, that's sir. doing that got some traction going. Yes, sir. So tell me about it. Where, 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 where'd that come from? I mean, that's that's old school R and B stuff. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, I've always just been kind of like an old school kind of individual. You know, my mom raised me on that Keisha Cole and that old Trey song. Oh shit. Kelly, <laughs> Keith Sweat. You know, so I've always kind of had that kind of intuition. In my in myself, and it's so it's hardwired in your DNA, right? Literally, <laughs> literally, quite literally. So, so let's trace things back, though. You know, because um, when somebody tells me that they're hard, they're, hard, they're hardwired like that, mm -hmm. I like to know where the hardwiring came from. Right. So you are from the Bronx, New York. The Bronx, New York. That's yes, where you're born at. Yes, sir. Uh, but you moved around a lot. I moved around a lot my whole life. Yes. So tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, where do you consider yourself from? So. I consider myself half and half from from here and from the Bronx because okay. I've always been back and forth. Like, you know, I was born in the Bronx, but then I came up here for a couple of years, went back to the Bronx. <laughs> half third grade year, went to Florida. Other half went back to Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a gypsy. <laughs> yeah, literally, man. Like literally, I was always a new kid at school and stuff. So. Okay, okay. So uh, tell me about SB growing up. Um, SB was a wild kid, man. SB just did whatever. Had no fear, didn't think of anything at all. But he was also, I was also always the odd one out. Odd school. one out. Any yeah. brothers or sisters? Nah, only child. Only child. Only so, child. So, and, and still the odd one out. <laughs> still the odd one out. Still definitely the odd one out, my man. So, 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 uh, elaborate on that a little bit. How, why are you the odd one out? Um, I just feel like I was always wired differently. Like, you know, back, it, it always relates back to the old school talk. Like, I feel like I was always old soul. Mm -hmm. I never got along with any of the kids growing up. Um, I was always kind of like the annoying one. I was always different too, you know, being right. that I am trans. As okay. Well. Um, I always struggled with like identity crisis. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> I can do so many things. I played basketball growing up, skateboarded, self-taught, uh, wrote music all the time. Like, I just feel like I was always a very artistic kind of person and growing up at, you know, that day and age, I feel like that wasn't kind of accepted. Right. Okay. And so you're, so you were, uh, kind of like a, a, a square peg trying to fit in a round hole. Right, right, right. <laughs> right? And, and you that always ain't felt work. that way. Right, yeah, literally. Now, now you just said you identify as trans. You're, you're yeah. trans. Yes. Um, people don't wake up and become trans. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and if they are, it's for a trend. Right, yes. it's, they're trending. Right. Okay, so tell me how. Tell me about your journey into, you know, finally getting on the, the, the hormones and tell me about that journey. I mean, how did you, when did you first know that, I'm assuming you thought you were homosexual. You were homosexual first. Yes. Yeah. Explain to me how that happened. Yes. So, I mean, I always knew I was different. Anybody that's in you know in my family or in my like circle that knew me growing up would tell you I was always playing with tech decks, Beyblades. <laughs> I was getting dirty with the boys. I never, I never even owned a Barbie doll. Like, swear to God, having that. never. Like, nah. So I would say when I was about like seven, eight years old, I was living in Pennsylvania at the time. So you've been to Pennsylvania too? Yeah, Damn. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere, fuck? man. Yeah, yeah. You know what the hell? Everywhere. Everywhere, my man. Okay. Um, but I was like seven, eight years old at the time. I remember I would like go to bed every single night praying to God that I was, a, you know, a boy and would wake up a boy with the same exact family. You wow. Know? So I just knew from that point on it was a little different. I never like, I never really wanted to like, you know, do makeup or do anything, you know, girly considered girly any type anytime i was wearing any dresses i would just be like eh, eh, not so eh, much i'm not really feeling it you know what i'm saying have my hair down whatever but it just it just wasn't me wow you know and then you know fourth grade came about and that's when i had my first girlfriend but like she was my girlfriend but like wasn't my girlfriend because like she wasn't really jacking me she wasn't feeling <laughs> so. so she had you in the closet <laughs> right right she had me still in the closet man <laughs> Um, you know, we would kiss and stuff like that, you know, just normal fourth grade stuff, but it was never like anything, obviously, you know, sexual, but. Now, did you go through a flip-flop phase where you went back to boys or, you know? Yeah, I felt like I kind of had to. I felt okay. like, you know, I, w I was a pretty girl, you okay. know what I'm saying? I was a right. pretty girl. So I feel like, you know, definitely little boys that were picking on me were definitely attracted to me. So I definitely, you know, had a couple boyfriends, I'm going to put it like this, right. because yeah. it was never anything serious. <laughs> right. It wasn't any, um... No posting, no, no coming for sure. out of the house. It right. was, it was like, hey, you're here to just, you know, make everyone think I'm straight. Right, 
Right. I got you. I got you. So, so when did you let that go and, and start living, you know, or, or, or at least start trending towards living who you are? I want to say about eighth grade. Eighth grade was kind of like a breaking point for me. I remember I kind of shaved like a quarter of my hair right here. So I had like the little <laughs> side shave going on. I told my mom, hey, I'm bisexual. <laughs> she was like, okay. Like, you know, obviously she didn't believe me. I'm a kid. So, you know, she thinks I'm just going through some kind of phase. But then I kind of did something clever. What would you do? I had long hair. <laughs> so I told her I wanted to donate my hair to Wigs for Kids, which I ended up doing. Right. I don't think I did. I did. So, <laughs> but that was your, your, your master plan. Right. That was my master plan. So... <laughs> I um I told her I wanted to donate my hair, cut all my hair off, got the fresh cut, was looking clean. Uh, that's and legit. then um after I remember my mom was like, Okay, it's time to start wearing like uh, more earrings, more dresses, being more girly and I remember we were on the bus and on the way back my uncle was with us and he was like, Oh, like, you know, leave her alone and I feel like in his head he knew you know, because like I said, everyone that knows right. me growing up knew I was always like a very, very big tomboy. And there's right. a difference between being just a tomboy but girly and, and being, a tomboy and being, right. you know, homosexual. So. Right. So, so the cat's out of the bag. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, my hair is gone. I even got the, I got the tattoo to show it. Man. Oh, so. Jesus Christ. So, so the cat's out of the bag now, and, and I mean that's really still a pretty young age for the cat to be out of the bag. Right, right. And how are they? Uh, how did they deal with that? How were they, were they accepting? Were they with the pushback or? I feel like there was definitely pushback at first, because um, I am, you know, uh, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Jamaican, yeah. Yeah, blacks, I know how to, yeah, you know, exactly. yeah, Caribbean household. Yeah, Caribbean household. So that ain't going over so well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so at first, my mother and I, I'm not gonna lie, like we got in. A pretty big argument um, at first because she felt obviously deceived that like I tricked her, mm -hmm. which I did. But you did. I, I had to do what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? I had to do what I had to do. I don't know how else I was supposed to do that. Okay. Um, but you know, obviously over time she did end up coming around. Um, okay. But being that I was the only kid and I'm the, her daughter, I was supposed to be like her mini me and yeah. like her best friend. And we're 20 years apart, so I understood completely where she was coming from. But I felt like in order for me to be happy in my life, I needed to do that for myself, you know? Yeah. So, so, um, you're, 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 you know, you, you get over that hurdle and mm. right next to that, you, you throw the next hurdle at her. <laughs> yes. I mean, what the hell? I mean, you're, you're a nonstop <laughs> bunch of hurdles you're throwing. So you throw the next hurdle at her and that's, that you want to become, you know, a male, you, that you want to start the process. Right. Tell me about that. How did that go over? Um, so I came across the video when I was about 16 years old. Um, I didn't even know that this was possible, but I okay. came across this video and it was just saying I'm FTM transgender. And it was this, this guy who literally looks like a guy you would never think anything of it, explaining how through his whole life he just felt like he wasn't normal. He didn't want to you know, wear dresses, mascara. He couldn't fit in with the girls. Blah, 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 just describing how I felt my whole life. I literally right. felt like they took my life and they put it on a YouTube video. Yeah. And they said, yo, this is for you, SB. This is for you. Wow. And um, I You know what that makes me think of? Yeah. You're, you remember the song by Lauryn Hill? Well, not by Lauryn Hill. It's, it's She remade it. Mm. Um, um, Killing Me Softly. Oh, kill. Yes. The words to that, you know, strumming my pain with his fingers. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's listening to somebody tell her life story. That kind of facts. sounds like what you're talking about. Yeah, facts. So, you get this video, you, you realize the possibilities. How old were you then? I was 16. 16. I was a sophomore in high school, yeah. Okay. Now, at that point, were, were you sure this is what you wanted to do? At the point, I still didn't even think it was possible. Okay. I, I saw the video, but I just, I thought it was honestly fake. I mean, I knew that I wasn't. I didn't feel comfortable just being a stud. I knew being a stud wasn't just enough for me because, like, you know... Break honestly, down that Break down yeah, that to the, to the people. What's a stud? A stud is a masculine-presenting female. Okay. Uh, you know, dresses in boys' clothes, has the short hair, and... Okay. ...is just kind of masculine-presenting. So that's is that a genre, uh, like a, a spinoff of lesbian? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. So that's like okay. an... I, I say, like... There's lesbian and then there's stud. I feel like lesbian is like the khakis and the sperries okay. and the button ups, but still have the long hair. Right. The stud is all the way. Okay, and yeah. there's also the femme. Yes, 
And I feel like the femme is the girls who are feminine presenting, which, um, you know, still wear dresses, heels, get all cute gotcha. and stuff like that, but are only interested in girls. Okay. So you are, you're, you're, you're a stud and time, yes. you're okay with that at this point. You're not, you're like, okay, I, I don't need to take this any further or you're unsure. You're... I'm unsure at this point. I okay. knew it was something different because whenever I would get like my, uh, my monthly, mm-hmm. I would feel embarrassed to have it. You know what I mean? Even okay. though it was normal, normal for me to have it, obviously, I would just, you know, be, I would be embarrassed. Like, I didn't want anyone to know I did. Like, okay. I didn't want to shave my underarms. Like, just, nor- just normal, normal the stuff narrow, that should Girl stuff yeah, you don't want right, to do. <laughs> right, literally, man, okay. yeah. But at this point, I'm unsure. I, I didn't know, like, I, did, I thought it was fake still. Okay. I didn't know how I was going to go about it. I didn't know any surgery, any anything like that. So you start researching it. Right, correct. Okay. And I sent my um, my mother the video, and she just read it. I remember she literally read it. She watched the video. She didn't say anything to me. I asked her, that, I think like two days later, I said, did you see that video I sent you? She goes, yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so... Um... You start moving. You as you're you're seeing. You say, "Okay, this is what I want to do." Correct. So at seventeen, yes, you 17. make the decision. This is what you're going to do. Right. Uh, tell me about that. Yes. So I remember I um I actually came out mm-hmm. as trans uh, for you know those you know two years or a year or so. I was talking to my friends about you know coming out and and well, what how were I they felt. like? Were they supportive? Yeah, they were very supportive. Okay. They loved me. Yeah. At okay. first, my name was originally going to be something else. But ended up leaning more towards. What was your name gonna be? My name was gonna be uh, Jaden. 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 That was okay. the name I was thinking of at first. Okay, and then you settled in on Matthew. Matthew. Yeah. Yep. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't know my real name. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, at seventeen, you make the decision. This is what you want to do. Yeah, I remember I wrote up a little thing on my my notes. I remember I was like. FaceTiming all my friends, like, hey, this is the day I'm doing it, this is the day I'm doing it, um, you know, make sure you're seeing it, blah, 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 and they're like, okay, we got you, blah, 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 and I remember I wrote up a whole thing, like, saying, basically, like, this, you know, is taking a lot of courage, um, I want to be addressed as he, him, and Matthew, um, you know, I thank you to all my people that support me, um, and this isn't anyone's decision but mine, so just, I ask that you just please respect it, boom. And I screenshotted it and posted it everywhere. Damn. Right. That was it. That was you it, talk man. about a come out party. Yeah, what the bro. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. So, so, all right. Might as well go, face it head on. So um, you decide this is what you want to do. That you're going to get this, uh, um, start taking the hormones. And you right. go down to, I assume, Planned Parenthood or something yeah. like that. Yep. And uh, what happens? Um, so I went down there. I was super excited because I've been hearing about it for like weeks. Like I've been doing my research and everything. Oh yeah, you're on it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, where can I get the hormones? Where can I do this? Where can I do that? I'm over here looking at like videos of like transitions. Like, cause people, you know, they take their year transitions. They take a picture every day for a whole year. Right. You know, they see what they look like at the end of the year. But I go down there and they're like, all right, cool. Like we're going to get you locked in. We just need, uh, your, you know, parent or guardian to sign for you being that you're a minor. So right. I call my mom, naturally. I'm like, yo, like, you know, they said they're going to do it, like, but I need you to sign off for it, blah, blah, blah. And she tells me no. Tells you no. Flat out no. That didn't hit well, did it? No, no, no for sure. I definitely, all. like, I definitely, like, you know, like, when you're about to cry and you get, like, a frog in your throat? Yeah, throat? that yeah. whole lump gets yeah, there. Yeah, man. I was like, oh, my God, I can't, I can't, like, break down in front of these people. But, like, bro, she literally crushed my whole soul with that. But you know what? She did it for a good reason. She, you know, she later on told me that the reason why she didn't say yes at the time was because she wanted it to be my own decision. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I get it. Um, she's co-signing on it with you, but she's not living it. Right. So, so she's saying, no, this is going to be all yours. So, so there's going to be no backdrop. There's going to be no backlash on me saying, well, you told me I could, you know, you didn't right. talk me out. I get it. I get that's a damn good reason not to. Right, no, for sure, man. For sure. So, so, so you're going through this at that point. You're hating her guts. Yeah, yeah. At that point, I'm like, fuck. That's like, a perfect example of of our parents make decisions for us that we're not happy with, and then later on in life we understand the decision and makes more sense to us. Right, for sure. You know, and, and that that's 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 really healthy. For sure. Uh, so, eighteen rolls around. You're on it. Yeah, 18 rolls around. I'm like, 
it's like a month after my 18th birthday, I believe. And then I was like, you know what? Wait, I'm 18. I can go right down to Planned Parenthood and I can get this done right now. And I just <coughs> went to just go ahead and go. Uh, get blood no work hesitation. Done. No hesitation this time. I go down, get blood work done. Two weeks later, I pick up the hormones at CVS. The next day, January 23rd, 2019, stamped. I, uh, I went in. Wow. They had me do my first ever shot. Um, basically, I just took my needle. They showed me how to do it. I stabbed myself right in my leg, and that's how I administer the testosterone. And I do have to do that once a week for the rest of my life. So. Shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, man. It's a, it's a sacrifice. Yes. So how do you go from there to decide and have your breast removed? Because now, now we're talking. I mean, shit. Yeah, right. So I was on hormones for about a year Close to two years, and then okay. I, I got I had the, the top surgery. Um, honestly, at first, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I tried all my research and everything like that, but nothing was, like, pointing me in any right direction. I didn't right. want to go to a doctor that was going to mess me up. I didn't want to. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never had surgery before. This is my first This is my first and only surgery. Okay. So I definitely. So you were didn't. nervous as hell. I'm scared yeah, bro, as hell. <laughs> bro, I got bad anxiety. Like, bad anxiety. A lot of people don't know. I'm actually, like, on medicine for anxiety. Yeah, like, no how well, bad it is. Yeah, no shit. That, <laughs> that, that, that don't drive you to it. I don't know what the hell will. <laughs> yeah, so I remember I um, found this this website. Um, it's uh, Chow Latham. I forgot what it's called. Like, Latham Plastic. Dr. Chow Plastic Surgery. That's okay. what it's called. It's in Latham, New York. Okay. It took me a second. I haven't had it in a while. <laughs> um, but he's a pretty cool. He's a pretty cool doctor. Um, the way I got it though was I actually didn't pay anything for it. Actually, oh. my insurance fully covered it, so I had to switch my insurance to a, an insurance that actually supported gender dysphoria. Because yep. technically, in Definitely the scientific right. term, I have gender dysphoria. <laughs> You know, I feel like I just want to be me. All right, you're just being um, you. They have to label it as some kind of mental disorder in order yeah. to get um, actual coverage for it. But I didn't pay a single dime, no copay or anything wow, like that's that. Wow, that's great. That's yeah. great. I remember I um, I went in for my consultation March of 20, March of 2020. Yeah, March of 2020. And then, you know, from then I had a couple of therapist appointments where they had to then diagnose me with it. And then they send a letter of recommendation over to my doctor. The doctor then sends everything over to the insurance company. Once they approve it, we can schedule everything. And then I got it done September 2nd, 2020. Wow. Okay. Now we got to spin the block. We got to <laughs> go back a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, so amidst all this, you're musically inclined. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. How is... I mean, how are you juggling these things? I mean, you're you're juggling gender identity, um, you know, issues. You're 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 juggling, you know, contemplating uh, uh, getting uh, uh, your breast taken off. You're contemplating becoming a man. You're contemplating all these things. I mean, you're going through some some of the most stressful shit that anybody could ever deal with. I mean, and 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 you're also. Make you know starting your music career, starting music up. How how the hell did that work? I feel like I never really saw music as a job. You know, music. Uh, I never really saw music as like a burden or something that was gonna take up time. I used it as a release. You know, from okay. all it, like an escape from reality, from everything that I was going through. I would write and I would get my feelings out. You know, so I never really saw gotcha. it as like a kind of ah oh, man, I gotta write today. Like, it's just what you did. It's just what I do. And it's just something that came to me naturally. Now, you went through some real dark times, yeah. you know, where you, you talked about to me, you know, feeling like you wanted to take yourself out. Right. Yeah. Did your music kind of bring you through that? For sure. Music in general def definitely brought me through it. Like, one of my, like, like, idols, like, one of my, like, seriously, like, people who really, like, brought me out of these times is uh, Justin Bieber. And a lot of people don't know that either. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't even think that either. Yeah, why? Um, he's just, his music, I just love vulnerable music. And I feel like when I listen to him, I feel like I know him. I got you. You know, I feel like I hear his pain. I hear his emotion. I hear everything he's saying. I okay. feel like I'm living through everything that he is singing about. Wow. Wow. You know, so, 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 
I mean, you're you're. When did you first? When did the music first um, show itself to you? When did you know that? So I've always been a writer. That's one thing I've always done, whether it's poems, Wait, poems or are, short stories, okay. stuff like that. But when I was about like nine years old, my mom had this boyfriend, and he was actually a writer. We actually oh, really? still talk this day. He's pretty cool. Um, and I started writing hooks with him. He's actually the one who taught me how to kind of, you know, write my hooks and make catchy melodies. Okay. Okay. So I want to say about nine. I've always been writing. Whether I got like little, like, little, uh, like 30 second right. songs, whatever. So it's always been a party. So this was a part of. I just 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 a part of SB. It's, yeah. it's just another fa- another facet of of who you are. Yeah, music's just always been me, man. You know, like no matter what it is, I can't escape. Like no matter like even when I wasn't taking it seriously, I like was still writing on my downtime. I was still like, yo, I just made this fire song, but like I don't know. I didn't at the time. You didn't know what to, to do with it. Yeah, I'm just like, what do I do? <laughs> I made a fire like, song, but okay, it's over here. Right, right, it's right over here, man. <laughs> so uh, your your music. Your your is your music influenced by well, what influences your music? Um I mean because some people are influenced by their upbringing, mm. um and, and and you know, some people are influenced by by like you you have a I mean, coming from South Bronx, I mean Yeah, man, yeah. I I I, I it's had to be tough. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely was tough. South um, Bronx is not the easiest place to, to, to grow up. See crack um, pipes. Oh, crack yeah. Heads. I mean, it's just like re- the regular shit. I mean, I, yeah, I, I remember going to visit my cousin once in uh, Co op City. Yep. <laughs> yep. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> you ain't Whoa. even in the bad part either. Yeah. And that was, that was, <laughs> this is good. Right. This, that's the good part, man. That's what he told you. Sure. This is good, bro. Uh, damn. So, yeah, so, so growing up there had to be tough and it had to influence you in some way. Yeah, I I feel like I feel like I always like I said like music to me was an escape. Okay. So I feel like a lot of things that influenced me was using my emotions that I felt throughout the times of growing up there mm-hmm. and putting it into my music and making it so that people can actually feel what I'm saying because I I suck at explaining myself. I really do. Right. I I suck. So I always use music and and other things to kind of be able to talk to people. Okay. Okay. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, um, that pain as a kid, is that in your music? That definitely is in my music. That is yeah, in for your sure. music. For sure. And, and, and does it hurt to go back there? It does. There's, there's times where I think on certain things. like, um, And uh, I, I get a little sad and I start right. you know, crying and stuff like that. Like um, my mother. Um, she remarried mm-hmm. and uh she um had an abusive husband okay um so you know going you know being a kid oh yeah you know, you I, you know i was i was seeing a lot of that yeah. stuff you know him hitting her and so i'm just going back and forth he even tried to put me in the middle of it sometimes like you know he even said to me like oh fuck you and your mother and i was like wow. 10, i was like 10 years old bro like Damn. why are you talking to me like that and yeah. mind you i'm a little girl at this time you right, know what i'm saying so right. i was like I just I've been through a lot, seen a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that that's and and that that has no other choice but to filter itself into your music somehow. Right. It's either so there's a lot of different ways that people filter grief and um things that they go through. There's people who would normally take that and then turn into like the biggest bully ever. Right. And just start beating up kids for no reason cuz they're so angry. There's kids that'll take that and start selling drugs. There's kids that'll take that and do something good out of it, which in my case, I decided to be productive and, you know, channel that energy and uh, negativity into something that can be positive. I got gotcha. you. So, so I guess it's a constant quest, though. It's, it's got to be a, a balancing act all the time. Right. No, for sure it is. Yeah, because yeah. there's certain days where I'm like, I'm very angry. Yeah. yeah you know, I, there I, is. I would think that, you know, there, there's some anger issues there. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I can't even lie. I can't even lie. I'm now, admitting it. Yeah. So, so I mean, that takes a lot of balancing because, I mean, you're taking, you know, oh, steroids. Just, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm like the Hulk, bro. That's what I mean. I'm it's like, like the Hulk, bro. it's like, it's like, yo, 
it's that extra dose of manliness, and then you know right. it's like and then all the pain and, and all the shit pain that's and in shit that you, yeah, from the bro. start. That that's got to be a lot to deal with uh, on a regular basis. So it doesn't surprise me that you deal with anxiety. Right, I have bad anxiety, um, depression. Yeah. Uh, PTSD. Oh yeah. I have ADHD. Yeah, oh, you got all the label labels. Yeah, God bro, damn. I'm all over the place, bro. I'm a damn walking <laughs> guinea pig. So, so when did you record your first um, record? Your first um, my first my very very first record. Yes, I was ten. Ten. I was ten years old. I recorded um, over. I don't know if you know who Lil B is. Of course, I know who Lil B is. Yeah, yeah. I recorded over his I own swag instrumental. Oh yes, okay. Yeah, and it went like it went like a little. I'm gonna do a little something. It went like Mr. Abracadabra, make you disappear. <laughs> the way Harry Potter act and still make you scared. <laughs> I remember I did that whole thing over in the studio. I still got all the videos and stuff like that. Wow, that was like my first ever record. Like, it was fire, man. It was fire. Like, yeah. it definitely if I like if we push that correctly, me being like, you know. The le- the ten right. year old that 10 I am, ten year old with the like, ten year old voices, yeah, right, yeah, and I was talking about having swag, you know, like swag, swag, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, swag. So I feel like that really could have went up, but I feel like again, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, everything happens. You know, one of the things that I felt is that things happen for a reason, and and maybe at that time you're not ready to deal with that also. I was going to say that, like, I feel like tr- having to transition is already hard enough. So imagine tr- having a transition in the public eye. Yeah. And then that's, what if, like, that's a whole I would have had to, like, stay as, you know, yeah. little Maddie. Yeah, that day. And, you know, where to keep my image. And then I ended up. Right. You know what I mean? So I yeah, feel so, like so God everything has happens a plan for, a for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, you know, uh, um, I forget the philosopher, but he said, um, you'll meet your destiny on the very road you take to avoid it. And that's always been one of the strong sayings to me because, it, you know, no matter what road you take, you're going to meet your destiny. Right. You know, you, you take, the, take, the left, take the left side, take the right side, take the middle, you're going to meet your destiny. You're going to be right where you're supposed to be. Right. Literally, so, man. So that, 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 that's, that's interesting that you say that and you frame that that way because that's exactly what that brings to mind. So you make your first one at 10. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I guess that's the itch now. Now you, now you got the itch. Right, right, right. For sure. Um, I mean, I'm still writing music and stuff at this time, but I, for some reason, I just, I just, I feel like because I could do everything, I couldn't focus on it at that time. That's the you know ADHD what I'm saying? Shit. Like, right? No, literally, bro. Like, I'm over here. That's literally that ADHD shit. I have a video on YouTube of me like doing a kickflip, then I go to rapping, and then I go back to kickflipping. <laughs> And then I was playing basketball and soccer, and I was just an athlete. I was just always outside, so I feel like I really didn't have the discipline or the mindset to kind of just sit down and be like, yo, this is this what, is I what I'm do. doing. This is what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? I got the talent, but I thought, my thing is, like, whenever I think anything comes too easy, I get bored. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And as a kid, you know, it's like the pinnacle is making a record. Now you think, okay, I did that. Now off to something else. Right. Literally. Well, right. Uh, I, I get that. So I get that. I'm still writing music and stuff like that, but I didn't even like start like, like I didn't get back in the studio till 15. Okay. Right. So 15, I'm back in the studio. I'm in Lansingburg at this point. Horrible mixer. Horrible engineer. <laughs> Horrible. Like I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, Shit. I'm glad it didn't come out my pocket, but <laughs> it was, I was like, what? And then I just feel like I was always pushed to be kind of a rapper that I didn't have the time to kind of like develop into the melodic kind of singing genre. And okay. I also didn't know that that genre could exist for me. Okay, I got you. Yes, I always I thought if you weren't like a Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, right, Justin that you Bieber, had to be a singer. Right. Right. In order to be a singer. Right. You know what I mean? I got so you. I feel like without that potential, obviously I don't have that fucking voice, but without that potential. <laughs> Not many people have that voice. Right, right. <laughs> but, but they still that, make a lot of records. They still make a lot, and they make a lot of money doing it. Right. But without that, I feel like, okay, I have to be forced into rapping. So I'm sitting here making monotone ass tracks. Like I'm writing, but the pain is not really coming to. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. it's not like my vulnerable kind of like music that I normally like. Like, if you literally rode in the car with me and you hear this kind of music I listen to, 
there's like it's not like all the hip throwing it's right. not like the you know dancing it's like the smooth like permission road james okay um, unusual trey songs and drake right i got you successful you know what i'm saying right. like so old, like not old, but like old soul. Yeah, yeah it's like, old soul. Like, like you feel me? Like, I want to groove. I want to. I want to. You know, you're you're talking. See, coast. Uh, I don't know if you might be too young, but then again, you you you're kind of been around the block, so you might know. But there's a genre that exists within R and B, soul. Yeah, yeah, R and B soul. Yep, R and B soul. Yeah, yeah, and that's what it is. It's that soul, that music that touches the soul. Right. So, so that's where you're at. Yeah, that's that, that's where that, you're riding. Too. Right. That's, okay. that's, yeah. Okay. So, so I'm writing music and I'm just like, nah, man, like this is, this is not me. Maybe, maybe music isn't my thing. So then I stop. But I'm still writing. You're still I'm not writing, writing, but music, you're not putting anything out. But yet. I'm, I'm, I'm writing, you know, poems, little haikus, okay. stuff like that, little stories. I'm even like, um, literally making like, uh, what are, what are those like little cartoon things that you draw? Comic books. Oh, comic books. I'm even okay. drawing like, like, comic books and stuff like that but like music is just not on my mind i'm skating and i'm still doing whatever i'm doing but i'm not i'm listening to music but i'm not really writing as much music right and then i get like a spur of the moment 17 again i'm like all right let me write this song right so i wrote this little song i put it on soundcloud i got over like 3k plays ah, everybody yeah. was fucking with it but it still just didn't feel like me like it didn't feel like me because right. I'm rapping. Like, that's okay. not what I need to be doing. That's not who you know you what I'm are. saying? Right. right. So, like, I can write. I'm, I've always been a good writer. Right. Like, I could probably write some rap records for these niggas out here. For real. Okay. And, and sell it. Right. But that, that's just that's not, not me. You. That's not me. That's not even my voice, bro. Like, I okay. don't even sound like. <laughs> feel me? Like, I have a soft ass voice. Right. So, what I'm, what I'm doing rapping. Um, But yeah, bro, I, I released it. Got like 3K plays on SoundCloud. Everyone's fucking with it. I'm at school. Like, yo, like. Listen to this track, blah, blah, blah. And I recorded it on my phone with Apple headphones in iMovie. Damn. So I, like, screen recorded the whole, like, track, Damn. put it in iCloud, and then recorded over it. So, so like, the most budget economical <laughs> way you could possibly do it. I got it, it done, though. Right. You and got it done. I got it done, though. And it doesn't wow. even sound that bad. Like, honestly, I played for people. They, they didn't even think that I recorded it like that. When I tell them I did, it was... Wow. It's funny. But then, you know, from there, I'm like, all right, music is what I'm supposed to be doing, bro. Like, look at this. I just got 3K plays on SoundCloud. Da, da, da. So I'm dropping, I'm dropping, I'm dropping. But I'm just dropping. I'm not dropping with intent. No I'm not. I'm just dropping a drop. Um, and then my, you know, views start going down. And then I also got involved with this one girl who uh, she's very toxic. But. <laughs> Very, very toxic. But she um she kinda like I wanna say like she kinda ruined my image from like okay. seventeen to like nineteen. I wanna say like my whole entire like image was ruined. Okay. Like I feel like she brought me down a lot. Um this is supposed someone who's supposed to be my high school sweetheart, but like she brought okay. me down a lot. She's very negative around me and was just like she told me. So you apart. basically had to go through a rebranding. Right. Literally. Damn. Literally. Literally. And I was going by like Father Matthew at the time. Bro. Okay. Like that was my name. Like ooh. Who comes up with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> right. So, um, so yeah, I'm dealing with that. And then I'm like, you know what? Music's not my thing anymore. Then I fall back into the, okay, I'm writing, but I'm not recording. I'm not doing this. I wasn't even going to a real studio at this point. I'm just literally depending on the phone and the, right. and the earphones. Yeah, you're... And then here comes 2021. 2021, I actually met Zay. So okay. I met Zay at a bar. Zay. Yeah, Zay. <laughs> Shout out to Zay. Shout out Zay, man. <laughs> Crazy. Yes. Yep. So I met him at a bar, and you know, we, we, we were cool, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He wasn't even doing music at this time either. But okay. We, we both, like, ended up kind of living together a couple months later. Okay. And then I found out he did music. He found out I did music. So our EP, three of those songs were actually made back in, like, 2022. Okay. And then... We added two more songs onto there, literally. That was it. But wow. like three of the five songs that are on our EP are were written back in 2022. But he was the one that kind of introduced me back into the music world gotcha. for a split second. Okay. So 2022 comes around. I'm writing a song. I haven't been in the studio for real since 15. So this is about seven years now. 
So he brings me this guy, Kyle. He's in uh, Rensselaer. Shout out Kyle. Shout out KL Studios. Okay, KL Studios. What's up? <laughs> um, so we go there, and I'm recording. Kyle's like, yo, nah. He's like, he, he's basically telling him ass, because obviously <laughs> I'm not putting no emotion in. I'm scared, bro. Right. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, so feel me? He's like, nah, 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 nah. So it takes me a couple tries, but obviously Zay's, Zay was always in and out right. of that type of stuff where I, like, kind of was new to it. So my emotions were not in the right place. They should have been in there, but, I again, I wasn't really feeling the music. I was just writing just to write. Okay. Sound, I knew it sounded nice. So... After that studio session, I felt good about the songs, but I was like, nah. So I, here's another year go by. And then 2023 is when I recorded uh, Your Love Is. Yes. And um, that song, that was the first song I put out in a while. Like, okay. the last song I put out was probably like, I think 18 I had just turned on SoundCloud. But like, okay. this is, this, Your Love Is is the one where I. Like, that's where I bought, like, a United Masters. So that's how okay. I knew I was starting to take it serious because I wasn't just posting on SoundCloud. Right, you were, you were like, taking control of your shit Right, now. I was promoting. I'm like, okay, how right. do I get on Apple Music? How do I do this? How do I do that? I still didn't have the visuals, but I was starting to take more initiative. And then I'm promoting, and I'm a little nervous because I'm like, oh, my God, like, last time I knew that when I posted it, like, when I posted my stuff, I got all the, like, recognition. But then, like, you know, after a couple songs later down the road, I right. started dying down. So I'm like, all right, how can I keep this, you know, going? So, you know, I release Your Love Is at March 26, 2023. And then I'm, st I'm back in the studio recording. I'm recording like every two weeks, bro. Like I'm writing and recording <laughs> every, yes, yes, bro. So then I released DTB April 11th. Um, okay. That was the one that really like made people be like, yo. Who is this? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, okay. And then from there is when I started like performing. So then I remember, like, the first show I actually got put on was by uh, Universal Sister Vibes, USV. Yep. Um, so I work at Spectrum. Okay. So she, act one of the ladies actually came in, and she was actually my customer. And we were talking and talking, and I ended up uh, getting on the subject that I do music, and she was telling me she had a venue, and she needed, you uh -oh. know, artists. So I showed her my music. She loved it, and... That was, like, my first actual, like, gig where I, you know, performed in front of people. And I was so nervous. I lost my voice that day. <laughs> I would, yeah, it was, it was, bro, it was, it was bad. But I did it. And no one really noticed. Right. Um, but from then, I just, I kept performing, man. Like, I just, I just kept, like, Yeah, something that you venues. have to do to get better at. Yeah. Right. I've learned that, like, if you're not out there in people's faces, nobody's going to pay attention to you. That's and right. no one cares about like you crying about like not getting attention you gotta nope. work harder for gotta it gotta work harder you know for the longest like I've always sat back and was like okay nah it's just gonna happen one day but I'm realizing okay you actually have to put in the work in order Damn to right. recognition you gotta and, and, and that's that's the way of the world I mean uh, you know I, I, I read it on the internet all the time and, and not to pick fun of your generation mm. but um, I'm a little I mean bit I don't old. like my generation I'm a, little, <laughs> I'm a little bit older than you so but when I when I see them crying about you know not getting supported in this and that, I just, okay work harder then, you know if it's there if you keep if you stay in their face they don't get they you can't deny me right so you you just kept working you outworked them right if you believe in a cause man like you gotta you gotta put in the time for it make other people wonder why you believe so hard right. in this cause you know what I mean yeah like and that's why I started disciplining myself like I stopped going out as much. I don't, okay. I go out like maybe like once, I went out like twice this year, like okay. so far. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I actually saw you, um, the first time I saw you was with, on the Zay video you guys did. Oh, Speechless. Uh, speechless. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's the first time I ever saw you and I was like, oh shit, because I was doing my research on Zay for his interview. Yeah. And I saw, okay, he did the song Speechless with SB. I said, who the fuck's SB? So I'm not like, oh shit, SB's <laughs> I need to find out who this guy is. And then, as I, as I'm doing research and just looking into you a little bit, you released this your newest uh, track, uh, "Made for Me." Made yes. for me. Yep. And I and and you know, so it came across my phone. I'm like, okay, I need to call this guy now. So so that's how you actually got on my radar was through Zay, you know, here in Speechless. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. So, yeah. Um, "Made for Me" sounds like a real personal track. It. It is. It is a very personal track, man. Um, 
I definitely like that was just everything in that song was me talking to my younger self everything in that song and it does show in the video yeah it does you know what i mean like that's why i have like you know the trans flag i have everything that makes me me, me, me. behind me you know i got the trans flag jamaican flag puerto rican yeah, it's all there i got the little girl skateboarding with the hat on that has yeah, yeah, me on the side i just saw that video of you, you know <laughs> yeah yeah right right <laughs> and you know i just i felt like i felt like i needed to release that i want i, I needed to people to see how vulnerable I can be with this music. I need people to hear me and okay. what I'm saying in my music. You know, I need people to realize that music isn't the same anymore. And I want to bring that real, that real music back, not that drill, not that rap. And there's nothing against people that are doing that, no, but that's, that's, that's their thing. My music is meant to be around for a long time. Your, your music is made for a more mature crowd. Right, and it's okay. meant to be for a long time as well. Yes, you know what I mean. Like, yes, drill music will be along so long as drill right. is around. Okay, right, right, that's right. just the bottom line. It'll be so. It's when drill is done, that stuff fades out. Right, you might go back to it, but R and B, soul music, right, is timeless. Right, it's timeless, and right, and, and 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 that's interesting that you say that because. Um, when I listen to it, when my wife listens to it, she says. I like that. And, you know, she don't like, usually like the music or the, you know, that's coming out. But she said, I like that. She said, who is he? I said, and then I played for her some other stuff. She's like, okay, I like him. Okay. So so you got a fan here, you know. Yeah, you just you just you, understand the you. wife. The wife is like, <laughs> okay, I can fuck with him. So, but that whole thing, that whole sound, um, you know, and I, I said this to you before, and I was talked to your mother a little bit earlier, and I told her, I said, it sounds like, um, like you just took old school old school music and and put a new cap on it yeah like a little modernized a little modernized yeah, yeah a little a, a modernized cap to it and presenting it to a new audience yeah i actually sampled uh, can we talk by tevin campbell oh i love that song too yeah, and you know you know you know the old old school yeah. people can love me. <laughs> yes yes and 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 yeah. The, the video, mm. the video was well done. Who 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 did that video? Uh, Top Dog Visuals. So uh, Key Supreme and um, Ace Supreme. Okay, damn good job. Yeah. Damn good job. Damn good job. And yeah. your leading lady in that video is your lady. It is my lady. <laughs> it is my lady. A lot of people don't even know what she looks like. That's well, now they, they do. Been, no, they have the bandana over. She still can't. Oh, that's you right. still that's can't right. see you who can't it see. is. Okay, okay. So so, tell me about that. How did you know how how influence how does she work her way into your world she's my dog man that's the first and foremost she's my dog um so i actually was supposed to make a song or i did make a song with her friend um so they pulled up to the studio where we went to owo studios they pulled up and i see her and i'm like she's pretty right so she falls asleep i'm making uh this song it's not released yet but i'm, I'm making this song and she wakes up from her nap Mm -hmm. and she's singing it so i called her out Sleeping on it I'm just, <laughs> right literally so i picked on her for it and she, i know like she kind of got shy because she started like covering her face or whatever and like mm -hmm. she don't know me she's one of those like girls that's like she's very like much so a mean person if she doesn't know you but i don't want to say she has a mean demeanor you know gemini i just want to say yeah yeah gemini shit regular shit <laughs> right, gemini shit but um it's funny because we come off as mean, but it's really not mean. Right. We're just very standoffish. Right. Um, I guess that's how. Yeah, we're that's very standoffish. Yeah. We, 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 our circle stays small until we're ready to expand it. Right. So, Literally, yeah. man. So, yeah. So then, um, a couple of days later, um, this is actually funny. So a couple of days later, you watch Speechless, right? Yes. She's actually in the Speechless video. She's playing my girlfriend in the Speechless video too. Not oh, many people shit. know that. Yeah, she's act that's actually my girlfriend. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so a couple of days later, like, there's this um event at the fuse box that I performed at. Mm -hmm. And um I I had a set, I was doing uh Let You Go in Our Time. So when they when uh her friend had went up Cadex, her friend mm -hmm. had went up, um, they were about to leave and I was like, nah, I gotta stay till my set. 
you know, my set are coming right. on. So they're like, all right, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So it comes on. I was like, I need you guys on stage. So I have like a whole group of me on stage, <laughs> everything like that. I'm performing. Everyone's, everyone's fucking with the set. Then our time comes on. There's like this spot. I don't know if, you, if you've heard of our time before. No. There's like a spot that's like, it like the beat fades out and it's like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's like, maybe it's a sign, maybe it's our time. And it's like, it's, I don't know, it just feels like you're in the music, in if the that mu- makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so when that comes on, like, she's over here, you know, shaking her hips and throwing her hips. So I, like, point to her, like, come this way. So then we start dancing on the stage in front of everybody. Like, it's on video and everything. So we start dancing on the stage in front of everybody. And then that's kind of, like, when she realized, when we both realized so the that we kind of... there. Yeah, yeah, that we had chemistry. Okay. So I remember, like, after that, like, I sent the video to, like, uh, me, my mom, and Zay have a group chat. Okay. So I sent it to the group chat. I'm like, yo, look at this girl. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I'm like, yo. You open. Right, right, right. I'm just like, yo, like, she's fire, bro. Like, she's fire. And, like, you know, they're all laughing at me or whatever. So then a couple of days later, I actually FaceTimed her. And I'm like, let me just FaceTime her. See, you know, see what happens. So... It you know, waits a while, the ring, you know, like when it gets to like the last ring, you might like some people just hang up. Yes. I was about to hang up, but then she actually answered and was like, hello. And she's <laughs> like, who do, you know, in her mind, she's like, who the fuck, who the fuck, you? Are you? Who the like, fuck is quiet? Right. you calling me? So I actually, that's when I asked her to be my girlfriend in Speechless. So wow. she was like, you yeah, sure. You know what I'm saying? But then she was still kind of like standoffish. I went to pick her up. We drove down to the city because that was actually filmed in right. uh, New York City. And... I guess like after the cameras were off and we were we were done, like we were still kind of flirting in everyone's eyes. Like we just had great chemistry. So like they would come over and be like, guys, you know the camera's off, right? <laughs> and like everyone was just kind of you still got still going. <laughs> right. Everyone was still kinda like picking at us. So like I don't know, I just thought that was kinda cool. So then a couple another couple of days go by and it's actually Zay and um Louisville J's music video party. Okay. Um, we go there and mind you Again, I'm I'm trans. She I I don't think she knows this. I'm sure she doesn't. She doesn't know me, you know, in right. the outside world. She only knows me as SV, the right. person who makes music. So, a couple of days go by, and we were at the music video now, and um, I'm like a little nervous because I feel like this is like when I have to tell her because I no, you're shitting you know, your pants. Right, literally, bro. <laughs> like I'm like, all right, you know, things I mean, are getting when you're a little. Fi- it's different, you know. I, we talked about it before when you walked in here. You said I'm trans. Right. But it's different when you have someone that you're really vibing with, you right? Know, and now you got to let them know, right? Because I so never you're really, yourself. <laughs> yeah, because I never really had to do that. Like my like my whole life, you know, like people, people know. know people right. know who I am. So it's like I've only ever had to do this like two three times, and right. like, this time I was actually like losing it because I'm like, oh my fucking god, like yeah. if this girl, this girl, rejection? right, this girl's gonna be like, nah, I'm not fucking with you, right? Blah 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 blah. So. I um we're we're done shooting the video at this point, um but we're you know we're still flirting the whole time, and then I go up to her and I'm like hey I gotta talk to you and you know I told her hey listen like I'm trans like I don't know if you know um but this is what it is and right. you know I hope we can still be cool or whatever she's like I already know <laughs> I was like what <laughs> so whole time I'm over here like <laughs> you shitting yourself. I'm over here like and cats she's like, already out the bag. Right, bro. Like I'm like I did that shit for no reason. Like literally. But you know, she allotted me that time and space to kind of, you know, come to her, which right. I thought was pretty dope. Yeah, that's dope. Um but you know, she's a cool girl. You know what I'm saying? She's yeah. a really good girl. Like Well, I don't like the bright, but us Gemini's are pretty fucking uh, cool. <laughs> can be irritating at times. Oh, but well, that cool. too. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, she 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 supports me a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, she doesn't get in any of my business endeavors. Like, if I got to shoot something with a girl, like, she understands right. it's strictly business. No, it's a lot that. because, I mean, you know, you know, we talked about it earlier. I, you know, shit, you're working a lot. Right, you're yeah. You're either that's working at work, work, mm-hmm. or you're working on your career, you know, your second career here. So it's almost like you're working two full-time jobs. I, I really am working yeah. two full-time jobs. One funds me, one doesn't. Right. But, you know, she... Uh, she she doesn't make me feel like any less of a of a boyfriend because of that. She doesn't That's make good. she knows that I get to her when I can. Like I'm taking her to Atlantic City next month or, or next week for her birthday and 
you know, I'm paying for everything. She doesn't have to right. pay for a single thing. I still make sure, you know, she right. gets things. You're still done doing the right things you're supposed to do. Yeah, and she's like a she's a really mo maintenance girl. Like she's she's <laughs> she's not like, oh my god, pay attention to me. Like she knows I'm here right now. She's not blowing up my phone. Right. Like I don't have to worry about oh my god, like if I don't answer, she's not gonna talk to me the whole day. She's gonna start an argument. I don't gotta worry about none of that. Like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like she's a good girl, she goes to work, yeah. she she's in school, like that's dope because you know, you know one thing you know she sounds uh, you know it doesn't surprise me she's June Gemini like me, <laughs> because I'm that person I don't give a shit unless you make me give a shit right literally <laughs> no literally saying? yeah it's like I'm good unless you give me a reason not to be good literally man <laughs> so, yeah nah I mean she's she's dope bro like she really that's dope. A good, I like I love that a good love soul that. bro we've been together for a year now so uh, like that's a, and that's, like I found it better to have like since we have such a private relationship like mm -hmm. i'm not required to post her you yeah, know what i mean like if good. i do post her i cross out her face just because like i feel like in a relationship it should just be me and the other person and vice versa yeah. because like anybody anybody else can interpret anything any other way i could be talking to a girl that could be like a long time friend of mine and Absolutely. somebody can go back go back to her and be like yo i saw this beat talking to this girl blah blah and then now you just started a whole argument yeah, you off of something you don't nothing. even know and you know, I've, it's 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 just like if I don't post her on social media, and everyone's gonna be like, "Yo, what happened, bro?" Like, da, right. da, da. like I don't feel like posting her. Then so, you got, so, I got everyone in my business. I don't want I don't want none of that. So SB, what's on the horizon for you? What's coming next? Man, I got a couple fire tracks I have in the tuck. For right now, though, I am continuing to push "Made for Me." We just dropped that. Um, I do have an what's coming on the back end of it. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah no. spill the tea right here. All right, man. I mean, I got an acoustic <laughs> version too of it. Oh, where I actually had somebody play guitar. Oh, that's I dope. have a live performance of it. That's fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm getting the cover art made for the acoustic track portion of it. Um, and then I'm dropping like a lyric video. You wow. know, some karaoke stuff too. Okay. It's just instrumental and stuff like that. Outstanding. So so you are artiste. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm I'm really trying. I think I believe this track is gonna be the one to really put me on the map, man. This one is wow. gonna put me on the map. That's fire. Off of all organic posts. Yes, I, I love that. Like I already have one reel going viral right now of me when I was like twelve years old doing well, a kickflip. Let me let me just help you out here a little bit too. You know, a yeah. lot of people think that they have to do everything organically, right? And that's that's a good way. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But if you start getting organic traction, mm -hmm. you might also want to throw some marketing and funding behind it. Oh, absolutely. To even push it for because you know what I'm saying. If it's showing, if it's showing, you know, that's almost like the proving ground. Right. The organic. If it's showing organic movement. Throw some funding behind that shit. No, for sure, for you know? sure. So, so, so don't, don't, don't. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, this is all organic. Yeah, that's great, but be, put some ass behind it. You no, know for sure, saying? for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, like to like for a proper release, you want to at least have like fifteen, right? Fifteen bands, you know, yeah. for like a that's like a very short. You right. know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, right. But you know, I. I feel like I can do the numbers organically. I want, I want the extra. I want to put on the extra stuff. Don't get me wrong. Right. And I, I know it's not like a bad thing. No. To not, I, ha you know, what I'm saying to have the extra stuff. The listen, extra push. All, everybody, every, you know, even these big pages, even these big, like, uh, 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 I don't know if you know MK, MK, uh, Marcus Brownlee. He's no. a he's a tech reviewer. No. Uh, he throws funding behind his shit, and he's got millions of followers. But it's like pushing further. It's well, because you could always get in front of a different crowd. Right, you can and get I in understand a different that. crowd. So that's why I say that. But, you know, man, this has been very, very enlightening. Very enlightening conversation. I'm so happy you stopped in today. I can't wait to air this interview. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you for having me, man. Oh, always, brother. You always welcome back here. In fact, uh, when we get done with this, you know, I'll be reaching out to you about doing some other things with me, some modeling stuff. With All right, yes, right? sir. I like the you know, you SB shot the, today. You shot your ass off. As be the model. All right, as be the model. As be the model. Yes, <laughs> Thanks sir. Thanks a lot, brother. Thanks for coming through. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. For real. All right. I appreciate it.